Hello, Asalaamu Alaikum everyone. And this is my ninth video lecture on the firearms and its mechanics. And in this lecture, we'll discuss some important definitions which are specially mentioned and to be understood by the students and the young doctors. They are like the what are the mechanics involved in the polar of abrasion formation? What is rifling? What are advantages of and functions of this rifling? Then what do we mean the bore of a weapon, both the rifled and smooth bored weapons? Then what is choking phenomena in the smooth bored weapons? Then jacketing, jacketing of the bullets what are advantages and why this is done. Then what do we mean by the trajectory of a bullet? And how, what are the positive forces? What are the negative forces which change the trajectory of a bullet? Then zeroing, zeroing is a phenomena or the process by which we overcome this trajectory. So zeroing of a weapon, we learn that then what is tail wag phenomena? Tail wag mean when the bullet exits the uh, muzzle, it becomes unstable. So there are certain factors which are responsible in making the bullet unstable during the flight and terminally when it going to strike or the causing the wound ballistics. Then the role of shock waves, the shock waves which are produced in the high velocity weapons and what effects causes. Then the commutational effect of the shock waves or the pressure waves. And in this lecture, we'll discuss a special phenomena, which is the back spatter phenomena. And back spatter phenomena helps in identity of the uh, assailant or the victim. So these important definitions we'll discuss in this first lecture. Okay, take care, Allah Hafiz. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. Good morning. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So, starting with the ninth lecture on the firearms and its mechanics. So we'll start with the important definitions which are important for us to understand. We have discussed all these definitions in our previous lectures, but I need that they are to be special mentioned and understood. So the learning objective of this video lecture will be that by the end of this video lecture, the students and the young doctors will be familiar with the some important definitions related with the firearms and its mechanics. And they are the color of abrasion formation. What are the mechanics which are involved in the formation of color of abrasion? What is rifling? And what are its advantages in the rifled weapons? Then how we determine the bore of weapon, both the rifled and smooth bored weapons. Then what is choking phenomena in smooth bored weapons and what are its advantages? Then what is jacketing of the bullet and its advantages? And what do we mean by the trajectory of a bullet and how we overcome this trajectory, which is a curved pathway, and that is by the help of zeroing. So we'll understand what is zeroing. Zeroing of a weapon means that we make the weapon accurate to strike at the target. So what processes we ad adopt to overcome this 
curved pathway that is the trajectory. Then we'll, we'll discuss what is tail wag phenomena. Tail wag phenomena, the bullet is unstable during the flight after it exit from the barrel and what are various tail wag phenomena. Then the shock wave effect in high velocity weapons, cavitational effect and a special phenomena that is the back spatter phenomena. So we will discuss these one by one in this lecture. The color of abrasion. Color of abrasion, it is because of the rubbing or rubbing of the margin of the skin where the bullet is entering into the body. Bullet is spinning and indenting. And when it enters into the skin or into the body, it rubs, it indents and rubs. So the margin of the entry wound become abraded and it is all around in the right angle uh, impacts. So that is known as collar of abrasion. Then the rifling. Rifling is a special phenomena which has been adopted in rifled weapon or a special technique. And this means that in firearms, particularly the rifled weapon, the helical grooves, they are engraved and they are machined into internal bore surface. They are basically parallel lines and grooved from the chamber end to the muzzle end. They run parallel to each other, but are twisted, are spirally arranged. So the combination of length, weight, and the shape of the projectile determine the twist at which it is needed and this helps in stabilizing the bullet. So a sludge of molten lead into the barrel is withdrawn and using it with a paste of emery and oil to smooth the bore. So it means Specifically, the rifling means that the inside of bore is cut or engraved longitudinally with a number of spiral grooves which run parallel to each other but are spirally twisted from chamber end to the muzzle end. And the raised portions are called lands and the load one are called grooves. The function or the advantages of rifling is that it gives gyroscopic spin for the stability of the bullet. It increases the accuracy of the bullet to hit the target and it prevents the bullet from wobbling as it travels through the air. So this is a diagram and picture showing the rifling. The view is from the top, from the muzzle end, and you can see the lens and groove which are spirally twisted. Now about the bore of a weapon. Both the smooth board and rifled weapon, we will discuss what do we mean by the bore of the weapon. Bore, gauge, or caliber of rifled weapon. First, we will discuss this. The gauge or caliber is the land to land width of the barrel. And it is expressed in one hundredth of an inch or in millimeters. So these are grooves and the lands 
and the distance between the lanes is the bore whereas the groove distance is called caliber but that is not for the weapons uh, ammunition ammunition is to be determined by the bore which is lane to lane distance of two opposite lanes this is bore these are lanes and depressed portion are grooves then the bore of smooth bored weapon this is by a peculiar characteristic phenomena the bore or gauge is the internal diameter in inches and it is equal to the number of lead balls made from 1 pound of lead and each ball fitting the barrel it is equal to number of lead balls made from 1 pound of lead each fitting the barrel so the most common 12 bore we listen we have listened this name which means the 12 lead pellets have been made from 1 pound of lead and each ball fitting the gauge or the bore now the choking choking is done particularly in the smooth bored weapons when the smooth bored weapon is fired the pellets try to disperse soon after their exit from the muzzle end and this dispersion increases with the range so degree of dispersion can be controlled to some extent by reduction in the caliber size at the muzzle end bore so slight reduction at the muzzle end is called choking so this reduction is significant but not more than 3 to 4 mm and this is called choking the functions of the choking it gives compactness to the discharge so as to keep them close together for greater distance after exit from the muzzle end and this choking is determined by the percentage of pellets striking at 30 inch circle when fired from a distance of 40 yards this is a diagrammatic representation in the red circle is the 13th circle at the distance of 40 yards and the percentage of the pellets which are striking at the center that determine the percentage of choking so when we say that the weapon is 50% choked it means that when we fire from 40 yards 50% of the pellets are striking in the 30 inch circle so this is a diagram showing the reduction in size at the muzzle end you can see the chamber end there is 18.8 mm and at the muzzle end it is 18.4 mm so only 0.4 mm reduction uh so the reduction is 0.4 i hope i previously i said 3 to 4 that is not 3 to 4 mm that is 0.3 to 0.4 mm i correct that and the end few portion is cylindrical so this is choking up smooth board firearm weapon then jacketing jacketing of the bullet means as we know that the lead is a rough metal and it will offer resistance in the air when it travel 
so to to make its surface smooth and fine they are dipped in a liquid of alloy of copper or zinc or other hard material and like the ornaments they are polished so similarly the lead bullets are dipped in an alloy of hard uh, metal which apply a layer on the lead bullet and it becomes smooth that is called jacketing and it now will offer less resistance than the lead bullet so they are covered with other smooth metals like nickel and brass or other hard material to make its surface smooth now the trajectory of a bullet the forces which are present in the medium which are negative forces which are interfering with the flight and deviating its flight they are air resistance and the gravity the air resistance will try to reduce the speed and gravity will pull down so the bullet will not travel in straight line because of the effect of gravity it will assume a curved pathway because of the pull of the gravity so these are the negative forces which are interfering with the flight so the trajectory of a bullet means a curved pathway when the bullet is fired the projectile fire uh, adopts a curved pathway this is called as trajectory of a bullet so this is the trajectory that means the curved pathway after the internal ballistics that is the when the firing pin is when the trigger is pulled firing pin strikes at the primer cap and there is combustion of the gunpowder and exit of the bullet will occur so there will be extern exterior or external ballistics and theoretically it is assumed that after the internal ballistics the bullet will travel in a straight line as this arrow is showing that the bullet will be traveling at straight line till at terminal ballistics or the wounding hitting the target but practically it doesn't travel in straight line so practically it travel in curved curved pathway curved line so that is the trajectory curved pathway so practically it is curved so till it reaches the terminal or the wound ballistics it will adopt a curved pathway so what happens is that as soon as the bullet leaves the barrel its forward motion is interfered by the air resistance and downward pull of the gravity and it assumes a curved pathway called the trajectory of a bullet so how to overcome this trajectory that how to overcome this curved pathway of the bullet and to make it accurate we have to adopt certain processes which overcome this trajectory that is called as zeroing so zeroing of a weapon means to overcome this curved pathway which the bullet adopts during the travel and make the weapon accurate so this is a diagrammatic representation you can see the aim is in straight line whereas the bullet is traveling in curved pathway and it is not in straight line it strikes at a lower point than the actual site of the angle site of the angle is straight but bullet is hitting below that target this is because of the curved pathway or the trajectory of the bullet which is by means of the air resistance and downward pull of the gravity 
So this is uh, measured in distances. As the distance is more, the fall is more. That is the curve will become more. So at closer distance, it will be less, but at farther distance, the fall in the target will be more. So zeroing of weapon, this is how we do it. The upper pathway is showing the trajectory of a bullet. That is the curved pathway. But the side of the angle is adjusted such that it, co it covers that curved pathway. So on the weapon, by adjusting the side of the angle, we are aiming a lit a bit higher than the actual target to overcome that curved pathway. So this is called zeroing. Zeroing mean that with repeated practice fires, we keep on firing and adjusting the sight of the angle so that it hits the target. If it hits the target, the sight of angle is adjusted and that is called that the weapon has been zeroed. That is zeroing a weapon. It will now hit the target. The trajectory or the curved pathway has been covered up in by adjusting the sight of the angle on the weapon. Now the tail wag phenomena. That means after the exit from the muzzle, the tail wags, the bullets become unstable. And this tail wag is initial tail wag, intermediate tail wag, and terminal tail wag. So we will discuss what are mechanics which are responsible in these three different tail wags or bullets becomes stable. Inside the barrel, the projectile is supported by the walls of the barrel and when it leaves the barrel and enters into a new medium like air, it loses balance due to loss of the lateral support and the air resistance and the force of gravity. So that makes initial tail wag. So initial tail wag is because of the loss of the lateral support of the barrel walls when the bullet exits the muzzle end and the air resistance and the gravity, they affect as negative forces. Then the intermediate tail wag, the bullet starts a circular motion around the axis of the trajectory. This is uh, the initial tail wag, sorry. That the bullet starts its motion around its own axis, that it, the tail wags around its own axis become unstable, that is tail wag. And after some flight, it gain balance and will, will become stable. Then intermediate tail wag is shown when the bullet passes through an other medium, like water, glass, then it will again become unstable and wag. This is a diagram showing the bullet passing through the glass and will become unstable and secondary missiles will be also formed. Then terminal tail wag is after a reduction in the velocity. After traveling for a quite distance, the bullet will now reduce its speed and because of the reduction in the speed, it will become unstable. The classical example of this bullet tail wag is seen when we spin a top. When we spin a top, initially it wobbles. It is unstable, but then it becomes steady. And in the end, when there is a reduction in the speed of the top, it will become unstable. So this unstability, unstability of bullet is called tail wag phenomena. Then the shock waves. What are shock waves? They are generated in the tissue, especially by the high velocity weapons. And they are 
tissues are so much energized that they also start traveling with the same speed of the bullet, which is 2,500 per feet per second. 2,500 feet per second. So the energy is imparted to the tissue and they start moving forward and outward and that is called the shock waves. They last for very short time, only 15 to 20 microsecond and are of high energy creating over 1000 pounds per square inch of the pressure. And they can rupture the gas filled organs or water filled organs like stomach and the bladder which are placed distantly, but these shock waves when traveling through the body, they can rupture the distant organs. This is a diagrammatic representation, the shock waves traveling around. This is another diagram. You can see the sphere around the bullet, which is this is a short video. You can see the pressure and hot waves which are traveling in the bullet. This is a pistol. This is not high velocity, but just to show diagrammatically, you can see around the bullet there are circumferential waves which are traveling. A closer view. So other particles, the smoke, the gunpowder, but the shock waves, they are also circumferentially traveling with the bullet. Now the cavitational effect. Cavitational effect is created by the bullets which are traveling at higher speed more than 1000 feet per second. The size and shape depends upon the capacity of the bullet to disperse energy to the surrounding tissues. As I have talked with the pressure waves or shock waves, the tissues will get energized and they will start traveling forward and outward. And these movement of the tissue forward and laterally away from the bullet will cause cavitational effect. And this continues for a few milliseconds after the bullet has passed because the bullet has imparted energy to the tissue and they are now traveling forward and outward. And this creates a cavity which sucks in air in from the entry and the exit wound and may be, this cavity may be 30 times more than the diameter of the bullet. But after the recoil of the tissue back, the permanent cavity which remains is much higher than the bullet size. So the, by the effect of the cavi uh, this cavitational effect and stretch the distant damage to the other vessels and nerves and even bones can occur. This is a gelatin model showing the cavitational effect of uh, various projectiles. The figure C is for the pellets, B for the uh, low velocity bullet and A for the high velocity bullet. This is a clay model and you can see the cavity which is much lar larger than the size of the bullet. This is a movie will, which will show you in a gelatin model, how the cavity is produced. You can see much higher cavity than the size of the bullet in high velocity weapons. Enormous size of the cavity. So the cavitational, cavitational effect is produced in high velocity weapons, while the low velocity weapons do not produce it because they do not have, the bullets do not have much energy to impart to the tissues. Now the back spatter phenomena. 
in contact or very close contact wounds the blood the fragments of the tissue here and the fibers of the cloth of the victim they can be sucked in and they enter into the muscle because of the negative pressure produced after the discharge because when the firing pin strikes the primer there is combustion of the gun powder and production of enormous amount of gases which produces much higher positive pressure and produce uh, exit make the bullet to exit out but after the exit there will be pressure falling to zero and sometimes negative and this negative pressure which has been created after the exit of the bullet sucks in the blood and the tissues and other elements in contact or close range fires it is important because the resultant stains and trace evidence will be found on the weapon and they will help in the identity and establishing the relationship with the crime on a particular person you can see the stain of blood which has been sucked in through the chamber of a revolver and has stained the hands it may be a suicide it may be a homicide but the stains and its identity of the stain will help us in identification so the summary of this lecture and after this lecture the students will be well familiar with the important definitions which we have already discussed in previous lectures and they will learn about the mechanics of collar of abrasion they have understood they have understood what is rifling and what are its advantages and we have come to know how the bore of a weapon is determined what is choking phenomena in smooth bore weapon and what are its advantages then we have discussed and understood what is jacketing of a bullet and its advantages and what do we mean by trajectory of a bullet and how the weapon is zeroed then we discuss the tail wag phenomena the shock wave effects of the high velocity weapons the cavitational effect of the high velocity weapon and the back spatter phenomena so these definitions these are discussed and we have now understood them thank you very much take care and allah hafiz